The only way to fight this cynicism, the only way to match the millions of dollars of special interest money, all that money that's being poured in as, as attack ads against Alexei, against Pat, the only way to do it is with your voices. The millions of voices who are ready to finish what we started in 2008. We need you to get out and vote. But we, we need you more than that. We need you to work to help get everybody out to vote. Because if everybody who fought for change in 2008 shows up in 2010, we will win this election. And you know, a lot of you got involved in 2008 because you believed we were the defining moment in our history. A lot of you believed that this was a time when the decisions we made about the challenges we face wouldn't just affect us, they'd affect our children and our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. That's why you knocked on those doors. That's why you made those phone calls. That's why you cast, in some cases, your votes for the very first time because you understood what was at stake. And now, two years later, I know that some of the excitement that we had in Grand Park, you know, that fades away. Some of the excitement, some of the excitement of Inauguration Day, you know, Beyonce was singing and Bono was up there and everybody was feeling good. I, I, I know that good feeling starts, starts slipping away and, and, and you talk to your friends who are out of work, you see somebody lose their home and it gets you discouraged and, and then you see all these TV ads and all the talking heads on TV and everything just feels negative and, 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 and maybe some of you Maybe, maybe you stop believing. Maybe, maybe you lose, you lose faith. But, but, but I want everybody here to understand. Don't let anybody tell you that this fight hasn't been worth it. Don't let them tell you that you haven't already made a difference. Because of you, there's a woman somewhere in Illinois who doesn't have to choose between losing her home and treating her cancer. Because of you somewhere here in Illinois, there's a parent who can look their child in the eye and say, you are going to go to college, we can afford it. Because of you, somewhere in Illinois, there's a small business owner who was able to keep their doors open and, and keep all the families that were supported by jobs at that, at that business, keep that, that company going. Because of you, somewhere in Illinois, there is an outstanding veteran, one of the hundreds of thousands brave men and women who are no longer at war in Iraq because of you. So don't let folks tell you that change isn't possible. Don't let them get you down. I know things are hard sometimes, but you know what? This country was founded on hard. You know, this country, was, this country started 13 colonies who folks said didn't have a chance against the British Empire. And then they drafted this document with ideas that had never been tried before. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. Endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. But even after they drafted those documents, it was still hard. And we had to abolish slavery. And we had to win women the right to vote. We had to win workers the right to organize. We had to battle through depression and the war against fascism and the divisions in our own country to perfect this union. And we haven't gotten there yet, but at every stage we've made progress because somebody stood up. And when one person stood up, then suddenly 10 people stood up. And then maybe a thousand people stood up. And then maybe a hundred 
thousand stood up. And then maybe a million stood up. That's, that's what happens with change. It's, it's infectious. And that's the spirit we need today. You know, in the introductions, I think some people mentioned a dear friend of mine who passed this, this past weekend. Uh, Bishop Brazier had a church right down the street. Michelle and I used to go to church at Apostolic sometime. And, and here's somebody who knew me when I was a young lawyer, had just moved to Chicago. And I remember when I was making the decision to run for president, I called him. And I said, you know, Bishop, I, I'm really not sure this is possible. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but I think it's worth trying. And he says, I don't know what God has in store for you, Barack. But he did say, you won't know either unless you try. And, and that idea is what has motivated so many people across the decades. That, that idea is the quintessentially American idea. That this journey is never easy. But we've got to try. And the journey we began together two years ago was not about putting me in the White House. It was about building a movement for change that endures. It was about realizing that in the United States of America, anything is possible if we're willing to work for it, if we're willing to fight for it, if we're willing to believe in it. So, Chicago, I need you to keep on fighting. Illinois, I need you to keep on believing. I need you to knock on some doors. I need you to talk to your neighbors. I need you to get out and vote in this election. Because if you do, if you're willing to step up, if you're willing to try, we won't just win this election. Pat won't just win this election. Alexi won't just win this election. But we will restore our economy. We will rebuild the middle class. And we will reclaim the American dream for another generation and generations to come. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America.